Hey guys, what's going on? I have been thinking about how I was going to do this video for a little while. I had a knife come in that uh, I spoke to a guy, uh, a guy named George Shaw. He ordered a couple of my neck knives, which are still out getting sheaths right now. They'll get to him as soon as possible. Um, but George had said that he had ordered a knife from Sam Morris, Morris Made Knives. And he was extremely disappointed with it. He wasn't happy with it. There was a lot of a lot of issues with it. He um, he said he wanted to send it to me to give it an honest review. And I was like, you know, yeah, I could do that because I can be honest. Like I have, I told Nico last night. You guys saw Nico was here yesterday. Um, him and his wife Saturday night. Um, I told Elliot I don't like anything about the scepter. So you guys know I'm, I'm friends with the guys at Fire and Forge. I don't like their the Fire and Forge Scepter. I can accept that people do like it and that there's people that really like it. I just don't, it's not a knife that appeals to me. It's a knife that I, find, I don't find useful. I find it less comfortable than some of their other smaller knives like my Entac. So the, uh, the thing about, I could be, you know, I could be, objective and, and get a knife in and, and still be able to give a good honest opinion of it regardless of you know whether I thought I would hurt anyone's feelings and I was like okay you know you know some people just have different expectations for you know for knives and things like that so then he tells me he ordered it it was a custom knife he said it's supposed to be all he said that it was supposed to be all titanium um, and so we're going with that it's an all titanium blade, all titanium handle, except for the carbon fiber scale on the show side. So get it, he goes, it's just, he says it's it's horrible. And this this is a knife. And um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it got here and <laughs> you can see this is gonna be, it's gonna be bad. Um, you, you have to give it a flip. You cannot get this thing to, you, it, if you really, really get your finger on it and push button it, you can get it. It's got some pretty weak detent um, lock up. It's got some lock stick. I actually had to put um, graphite on the spine of the blade because it is not a titanium blade. It's a steel blade. So, and I, I kind of, I, I kind of was suspicious of that when I first got it. And I was like, I feel sharp for titanium. You know, for titanium is hard to to get sharp. To hold an edge because you can only get it around 40 40 maybe 41 45 rockwell which is just about the area of untreated steel so this is this is significantly harder now i don't know what the rockwell is on it but it's i've cut with it i've cut a few things and it holds its edge so it's not it's not soft like that but i, I got it and i was like wow really and i never asked him how much you paid for it it's got a one-sided pivot with a mosaic uh, knob on the top of it uh, and then over here you've got another just the single screw uh, has a pretty nondescript flipper tab that judging by the jumping you would think that that's and there it wants to do it now um, that it's uh, that you just be able to push down on it like that nope you got to really load up on it and then it's got this obnoxious pocket clip I'm, I'm not trying to be mean just for the sake of being mean. I'm just saying, having carried it, this thing is full of hot spots. Um, that pocket clip, I'll turn the camera around here in a minute, but at any rate, when you hold onto it to flip it, it digs into your fingers, it digs into your hand when you're holding it. Um, it's just, it doesn't flip. And so I was asking him, I was like, you know, George, how much did you pay for this? Because I just wanted a point of reference. And uh, so, you know, some, sometimes people are kind of, you know, it's like, hey, if you don't want to tell me. So he told me, he paid $400 for this. Now, in comparison, I have a $40 knife here on my counter. Oops, <laughs> I missed it twice. And this is better. Now, I did resolve a couple of the minor issues. This thing was not centered. Uh, it was a lot less smooth. Um, I haven't re-oiled it since I took it apart and cleaned it a little bit, but um, let's do that real quick. See, maybe that'll make a difference while I'm talking about it. 
put a drop here to let it a little capillary action down onto the to the bearings but um it was off center and it just it felt weird and it felt gritty well the thing was i took it apart and there was spacers on top of the washer so in here inside you have the bearing and then a, a washer and then a little tiny brass spacer up well one side there was two on another side there was one and i took one out on the other side and it centered it so i mean it's one of those things where like i don't want to i don't want this to be like you guys think i'm just picking on somebody but it's not but this knife left with these issues and let's see nope 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 and it's not like i'm not trying there every once in a while it will um this left so now we're gonna take a look at it and then we'll, we'll turn this back around and we'll talk about the other issues that george had with this and what really irritated him um it wasn't so much the knife itself it was some of the other stuff but hey cheers you guys let me get this turned so like i said guys I'll turn this around and look now you can see the the pivot is not an unattractive pivot um i did put some graphite on that to keep it from locking but i mean it's carbon fiber it is the lightning strike with the bronze wire carbon fiber but the rest of it is just so rough um this is one of the things that god damn it um that uh edge grind that blade grind is really 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 rough um and there was nothing really done the the edge grind itself is not great um it's not really sharp it's sharp ish but it's not really sharp i jammed a piece of metal way up under my thumbnail the other day it really is sore if you guys can see it right there but like i said it's it's not a very big knife to begin with it's got some really serious grit to it now if i get on and i really squeeze here here's the way i found that i can make it work if i really get my finger in here and i really squeeze on the lock bar it allows that no nope, still didn't do it there it went i have to put pressure on a lock bar to get it to deploy to fully flip uh, and like i said that pocket clip is just one massive hot spot it'll dig in your finger when you're trying to get a hold of the knife it digs into the side of your finger and when i'm holding it it digs in. Let's see if I can get a hold of it and see if it leave a mark. See right there? So I'm holding it. If I've got a hold of it like right here, like I'd be using it to cut, which is this is how I would hold this small of a knife to cut with because it doesn't have a forward choil. It's digging right in there. Um, and then, like I said, the washers were in but then there was spacers in there that uh that there was more on one side than the other and so it was really awesome i mean it's still not centered but it's way better than it was it was pretty much rubbing on the carbon fiber until i took the spacer out on this side and moved you know basically evened it out a little bit but imagine i might just be able to take the spacer out on this side completely and that might center it the problem I had was I had to really play around because if you hear people complain about Ferrum Forge's pivots being hard to get apart or tighten because they spin, this was a nightmare. Even when I put it in my hand and I got a hold of it and I put pressure on it and I torqued it all the way over, this still just wanted to spin. Um, but, I mean, for $400, uh, you know, I've never talked to Sam Morish. I do know that he was Tough Thumb's apprentice, which is why this reminds me. I saw it, and all I could think was that this reminded me of Tough Thumb's Tannic, which kind of that kind of explains it a little bit. Um, that you know that could be a reason that that is so reminiscent to me that blade design. Um, it's not too thick though. I mean, it is ground nice and thin. I imagine that once it gets sharp and good, that it, it will have you know some good cutting potential. But the other thing was. George was told this was a titanium blade, and it's absolutely not. Um, the pocket clip is, it's one of those rattly pocket clips, it just kind of sits and and rattles in your, 
but it's got a lot there's some lock stick it will not okay if I don't put pressure let's see here if I just hold it like this and I don't put pressure on the lock bar I got it that time because I had my finger on the on the pocket clip I'm trying to do it without my finger on the pocket clip at all there it went but you know half the time it just doesn't want to deploy As far as the grind, the grind is nice and even. You know, I mean, it's when you look down at the Ricasso, it's ground fairly decent. It has a usable, you know, sharpening choil. But um, I'm not going to take this back apart. I had intended on doing some anodizing and stuff to this and just playing around with it. This is a pain in the butt to get apart and put back together. It is. It by far is one of the most difficult. These screws go all the way through. So you have to line up the backspacer and, and everything, put it back together. I took it apart, clean it up. I doubt if I'm going to take it apart again. I seriously doubt if I'm going to take it apart again. But the other thing is, it's got a swell right here. That, well, with being a Tonto, it's not a big deal. But if this was ground, uh, like another knife where the... You know, it wouldn't have this thick swell here, so it's actually really thick right here. The material's really thick right here, and then it thins out. And it just feels like it's thin, then thick, then thin. So, I mean, it's... On Tonto, not such a big deal, but it could have been executed a little bit better. So, basically, yeah, this is... I would, I would be disappointed if a knife I made at the $400 price point looked like that. Um, the jimping is it doesn't make sense and then this pocket the, the other thing that i was going to mention is this uh the flipper tab once you get it up in here and then it digs into my finger right there the jimping on it digs into my finger and then the pocket clip is pretty proud back here and then this digs right into the heel of my hand so everything about this just I'm, I'm just, I really understand why George was so upset. Now, I've looked at Sam's website, and some of his other knives seem to be better, but I mean, you can see anything on the internet and not necessarily have it be what you think it's going to be when it actually shows up. So, I'm going to turn this around. We'll talk about it some more. All right, guys. So, that, that wasn't great. Um, the... The reason I'm doing this is not, not specifically because George wanted me to. He sent me the knife, and I'm going to give it an honest review. That's what he wanted. Um, but I'm not doing it to be mean. Uh, it, it was not done to be ill-natured. Uh, like I said, I've looked on, on Sam Morris's website, Morris Maid's website, um, and the knives that he makes, other knives he makes, they seem to look really awesome. This one just, maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was before he got as far along into his knife making. Uh, but inside here, it had S and M number one. So I don't know if this is the very first one he damn it, ever made. But the fact is that George was so uh, upset with this knife and with how it turned out that he actually, he gave it to me. I was asking him, I was like, you know, I'll do the review. Is there anything you want me to do for it? You know, me do some anodizing or stuff like that. And he says, you know what? Screw it. Happy New Year. Keep it. That's how disappointed he was with this. Um, and I can honestly, I can say, I can honestly see that, you know, if you spent money on something and it was that disappointing. Now, I have a $400 knife that is not a handmade custom. It was a $400 knife that's way better than this one and that is my uh my react uh and so that's how i that's how i compare things these days you know i make fixed blade knives right now i haven't made any folders but i look at okay if if i see a custom knife a handmade knife and back in the day that used to be hey that's better but these days you get a production knife and a lot of times they're better than custom quality and custom knife makers just aren't realizing that and if you're going to sell a knife at $400, it better have some fucking bells and whistles with it. So it's, it's that point of, you know, value. Yeah, it was handmade, but if it's handmade and it looks and feels like shit, 
you know, that's the difference. I am going to try and do a couple things to this. Like I said, I'm going to see what it's like if I take the other wash or the other spacer out and see if things even up. What I'm afraid of though is this thing is such a pain in the butt to get apart, and I'm afraid I'm going to I'm going to crush a, a spacer or something because they're just little brass spacers. But no, I wanted to do this uh, because I just I wanted to get it out there. The reason that George was so upset. Because apparently he tried to reach out and get a hold of the maker and couldn't get a hold of the maker. Uh, the guy didn't want to correspond with him, couldn't get a hold of him via email. There was like, basically there was just no resolution for any problems he was having with his knife. And uh, so basically he was like, screw it, I'm done. And he's, he, was, he was really, you could hear it in his voice, that he was really frustrated that, you know, that this guy just kind of blew him off. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I had gotten this knife, I would have been trying to call and things like that. Uh, that's just, that's, I mean, I get it sometimes, like, I don't, I understand why there's, there's times where people don't want to, you know, I, I don't try to call Farron Forge. They're not going to talk to you on the phone. It's just all there is to it. Email. Um, but they, they do respond to emails and things like that. But I get it because, you know, sometimes you're taking away from your day. But if you've gotten multiple times that the same person has tried to contact you about something that you've done, then you probably need to talk to them. And so I see both sides of it. Like, I don't like doing emails. I would prefer to do everything via text. I don't like so much doing phone calls. Um, I do talk to a few of you guys pretty regular. There's a handful of you guys that I talk to, but I would much prefer to do, do stuff via text. Email probably is better because there's a record of everything. Texts can get erased and deleted and things like that a lot easier than emails. But I get it. I don't necessarily want to interact with all of my customers all the time. You know, you, you start getting busy, and then the next thing you know, you spent the you spent an entire morning just talking to customers, and then you haven't gotten anything done and they still are expecting you to get their knife done or their knife sharpened and out to them. So uh, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. I do get it, but I can understand as a consumer that if I had bought a $400 custom knife that I would want to be able to have some interaction with the maker, possibly. So but that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a video on this real quick. Uh, I, don't think, I, I don't think there's anything I'm going to be able to do to this or for this, that lock stick is horrible. Um, probably just gonna sharpen it and I'll keep it here for cut tape and stuff like that because George said he didn't want it back. So, all right guys, that's it. I do have a video I wanna do about this GTC um, design Kershaw, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. I need to get this. This, my cousin bought this and I still have not sent this out to him. I need to get either get it shipped or get the video done, one of the two. I sharpened it. Um, it still needs to go out to him. Uh, but th this does need a video before I send it. And I have a couple other Kershaws I'm going to do videos about. So, get it, guys. I'm glad that some of you guys did log in on my live feed last night. That was pretty cool. It was the first one I did in here. I have a heater out here. It is actually pretty chilly outside today. And it's pretty, it's fairly comfortable in here. Nico and I had it pretty warm in here. Uh, last night while we were in here and I was like wow it's like you wouldn't even really need a sweatshirt uh, I just came out and turned it on right before I started this video it does take it a little bit to warm up but so I am going to try and do for those of you that are my Patreon subscribers I'm going to figure out how I can do a Patreon video just for you guys and so you can kind of see what I'm saying I had a TV out here last night and we caught it on fire don't know what was up with that so anyway guys that's it. That's the end of the video. I'll get this edited and get it up as soon as I can. I got to go in and help my daughter. That's what that interruption was. Um, well, you guys didn't see the interruption. I hadn't really started filming yet. I've got to go in and help my daughter stretch. So, All right, guys. You guys take it easy, and I will see you next time.